Welcome back. The leaders of France and Ireland are refusing to ratify a huge trade deal with South American countries unless Brazil does more to fight raging fires in the Amazon. President Emmanuel Macron said President Jair Bolsonaro lied to him about his stance on climate change. He has Simon Pusey with more and other international stories in Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. The Brazilian government lacks the resources to fight a record number of wildfires burning in the Amazon rainforest. That's according to the president, Jair Bolsonaro, just weeks after telling donors he did not need their money. Fires in the Amazon have surged by 83% so far this year, compared with the same period a year earlier, destroying vast swathes of the forest, considered a vital defense against climate change. Brazil is facing growing international criticism over its handling of the Amazon, 60% of which lies in the country. Portuguese footballer Cristiano Ronaldo earlier tweeted this photo saying, the Amazon rainforest has more than 20% of the world's oxygen and has been burning for the past three weeks. It's our responsibility to help save our planet. Bolsonaro has said without supporting evidence that non-governmental organizations were behind the fires. Meanwhile, environmental groups say the fires are linked to the Brazilian president's policies, which he denies. He needs to say, stop the burning, that we will not tolerate deforestation. We will fight crime that destroys the forest. The president has not done this. He attacks inspectors. He attacks scientists. He attacks the indigenous. He criticizes them all. All those who protect the Amazon, he criticizes Germany and Norway. And at the basis of it is the Amazon. At no time has anyone heard the president of the republic criticize environmental crime. The commission is deeply worried. Uh, the Amazon is the world's largest rainforest and contains one-tenth of the world's species. That's why we do welcome President Macron's intention to discuss this issue during the G7 meeting. Uh, the sense of urgency is, is indeed warranted. We are in touch, as always, with the Brazilian and Bolivian authorities and stand ready to assist in any way we can, be it, for example, uh, by providing assistance or by activating our Copernicus satellite mapping systems. Meanwhile, a blazing wildfire engulfed land along Marbella's AP7 motorway. Flames could be seen billowing into the sky as Spanish emergency services attempted to tackle the fire. At one point on Thursday night, residents of 40 homes were evacuated. At least five people have been killed in a stampede at a rap concert in the Algerian capital. Thousands had gathered at a stadium in Algiers to see a rapper better known as Soul King perform when a stampede is said to have broken out at one of the entrances. 21 people were injured in the stampede and taken to hospital. The concert then went ahead and was carried live on Algerian TV. A man convicted of killing three gay men during an eight-month crime spree in 1994 has been executed in Florida. Hills was executed by lethal injection at 10.58 p.m. at the state's death chamber in Rayford. The execution had been delayed for several hours as the 57-year-old sought unsuccessfully for a last-minute appeal for his life from the U.S. Supreme Court. A 17-year-old Israeli girl has been killed in a bomb attack near a Jewish settlement in the occupied West Bank. Rina Schnurb had been hiking with her brother and father outside Dolev when an improvised explosive device was detonated. It was not clear if the device was thrown or had been planted there. Rina's brother and father were seriously wounded by the blast and were evacuated by helicopter to a hospital. Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered a like-for-like -like response to a recent US missile test. The Pentagon said it had tested a conventionally configured cruise missile that hit its target after more than 500 kilometers of flight. Washington formally withdrew from the Cold War era Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty on August the 2nd after accusing Moscow of violating it, a charge dismissed by the Kremlin. Staying with Russia, and the country has launched a pioneering floating nuclear power station which will sail 5,000 kilometers from the Arctic port of Murmansk to Chukota in the Far East. The nuclear agency Rosen Ergo Atom says the ship's mobility will boost the power supply to remote areas. One of its targets is to power a large mining complex in Chukotka, which includes gold mines. Greenpeace sees the project as high risk in a harsh weather environment. And finally, a Malaysian taper has given birth to its third baby at Antwerp Zoo in the north of Belgium. It's yet another success for the zoo's 29-year breeding program. Malaysian tapers identified by a light-coloured patch from the middle of their body to the rear are an endangered species. 
Unlike their adult parents, the baby tapirs are born with distinctive coats that help to camouflage them from the potential predators on the forest floors in their native Southeast Asia. Eight-year-old mother Nakal's baby came after a 13-month pregnancy. Her two other offspring have been transferred to other zoos as part of the breeding program. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks, Simon. IELTS in Nivalo going up next with sports news. Yes, indeed, the March. Well, not too cherry news from the African Games taking place in Rabat, Morocco. Well, Nigeria will not feature in the women's table tennis team event at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics after losing to Egypt in the final of the 2019 African Games. Egypt's trio of Dina Meshref, Farah Abdelaziz and Yusra Helmi aged Nigeria's trio of Funke Oshonaike, Ofyong Edem and Cecilia Appen 3-2 to clinch gold and picked Africa's sole ticket. The table tennis team event at the 2019 African Games serves as qualifiers for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Niger Tornadoes Football Club have crashed out of the 2019-2020 CAF Confederation Cup. Tornadoes forced Santoba to a thrilling 3-0 draw in the second leg in Conakry. But the Mina Bay side exited the tournament 5-4 in goals aggregate after losing the first game 2-1 and played two weeks ago in Kaduna. Belgian champions KRC Genk have announced the signing of Super Eagles forward Paul Onwachu from Danish side FZ Midtjylland. The 25-year-old who helped Nigeria clinch a record eighth AFCON bronze medal in Egypt last month becomes the club's eighth signing of the season. He will join fellow Nigerian and former MFM goal king Stephen Ode, who also joined this summer from Swiss club FC Zurich. Super Falcons head coach Thomas Denneby has stated that six players invited for the first leg of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic women football qualifier billed for August the 28th in Algeria will not be available owing to club duties. But the players who opted out of the match have duly informed the NFF and they are Aziza Toshola, Francisco Odega, Ngozi Okobi, Ngozi Ebere, Rashidat Ajabadi and Osinachi Ohali. And that's Sports News. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. It's back to you, Maraj. And the main news again, the election petition tribunal today nullified the election of the senator representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Dino Milaye. The tribunal ordered a fresh election to fill the senatorial seat, but Senator Milaye said the judgment is a plot to distract him from pursuing his governorship ambition. On the contrary, his rival, Smart Adiyami, said the judgment is a well-deserved victory for him. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.